If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. In order to solve part A, we need to look at the equation that relates the magnetic force to the charge, speed, and magnetic field. And so here is that equation. What we need to note is something regarding the angle theta. The question asks us to find the maximum magnetic force. And it turns out that in order to maximize the magnetic force, we would want the angle to equal 90 degrees. And in order to explain that, we can consider the sine function, which sort of oscillates up and down. And we can see that the sine function reaches its maximum level when the angle is at 90 degrees. Some of us might remember this from trigonometry. So in order to maximize the magnetic force, we would want to maximize the sine of theta. But to do that requires that we make theta 90 degrees. For the charge Q, since the particle is a proton, we can simply use the charge on a proton, which is, has a standard value. V is the speed, which is given to us in standard units, and then B is the magnetic field strength, which is also given to us in standard units. So we can just go ahead and plug everything in now. Note again that we're using the standard value for the charge on a proton, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs, and then the sine of 90 degrees is actually equal to 1, so we've put the 1 in for the sine of 90. We can then pick up our calculator and process this computation. And when we do so, we get a value of 1.44 times 10 to the minus 12 newtons. So that would be the maximum magnetic force exerted on the proton. On to part B, and to solve that, we recall from physics 1 and Newton's second law that the net force acting on an object is equal to ma. We assume that the only force acting on the proton is the magnetic force. So we can actually replace F net with the magnetic force. And then since we're trying to find the acceleration, we can divide both sides of this equation by the mass m so we can isolate the acceleration. And so now all we have to do is plug in the maximum magnetic force that we just computed, as well as the mass of a proton, which you can look up in your textbook. So we'll go ahead and plug in those values. And when we process this calculation, we can see that the maximum acceleration is approximately 8.62 times 10 to the 14th meters per second. So this would be the correct answer to part B of the question. Now to solve part C and determine whether the field exerts the same magnetic force on an electron, we have to just go back and look at the equation that we use to calculate the magnetic force. Now the question notes that the electron would be moving with the same speed, so the V would have the same value. The magnetic field strength is also not changing. We assume again that the angle is 90 degrees, since we're looking for the maximum magnetic force. And then Q, for an electron, has the same magnitude of charge. It's 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. Of course, it's negative, but the actual magnitude of the charge remains the same. So since the magnitude of the charge, speed, magnetic field, and the angle are all remaining the same, that means that the field would exceed would indeed exert the same magnetic force on the electron. So the correct answer to part C is yes. But for part D, we know that acceleration again is the net force divided by the mass. Now we just concluded that the net force is the same. However, the mass of an electron is much smaller than the mass of a proton. And when you make the denominator smaller, that actually tends to increase the acceleration. So the electron would not undergo the same acceleration. Indeed, it would undergo a greater acceleration. And the reason is that it has a smaller mass. And so that would be the correct answer to part D. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click that thumbs up icon and share it with your friends. And also don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Remember that you're welcome to send in your own question to this email address and I'll do my best to post an answer to it on YouTube.